What would you do if I removed half of your options? Project Zomboid. Challenging, to be sure. But with mouse only? Very challenging. It's always a satisfying experience to overcome limitations and learn about faculties you had available to you all the time, but didn't even know about due to an imposed self-rule of discipline. I think it's fair to say we each possess a well of abilities from which we seldom tap the potential which lay there in store. Just as the blind man's hearing and sense of touch are sharpened by the blotting of light, so too can we each sharpen and cultivate our other faculties by a self-imposed rule of deprivation. You can do this in your own life by choosing not to take part in things that give you pleasure. In a few days, your reward circuitry will be reset, colors will appear more vibrant, and the world around you will light up. Today, we embark upon a cringe quest of struggle to point and click our way toward apotheosis. Our spiritual journey commences within the dankest of kitchens. It's important to understand the adversary we are confronting today. I will use only one hand to play Project Zomboid. This is about overcoming limits, and the journey will push our creativity to engage with the world around us in novel ways. Day 1. The first day is about getting oriented with our new surroundings and faculties. Fortunately for us, Project Zomboid has a pause button where we can stop, think, and consider our options whenever it's important. Let's get oriented. First things first. Looking around. So far, so good. We can do that with our mouse and never have to touch the keyboard at all. It appears as if we're inside of a house. We add this to our ontology and continue down our excited, right-handed quest. So what's next? Movement, a faculty traditionally reserved for the left hand. That's okay because we can right-click our way to victory. Moving everywhere with my feet. The next puzzle, closing the curtains. Well, we can just click on them, that's fine. What about opening the door? This is a major confrontation, but we can also just click on it and turn off the light before we leave. I accidentally close the door and then walk out and close the door on purpose this time. I know this takes a lot longer, but maybe this journey will lead us to tranquility. I walk outside and apotheosis. My body is now outside of the house. Zombies. Wherever there's a threat, we'll be stuck planted in place. Therefore, this will require some planning. I have a few options. Either walk up to the zombies and fight them, hoping that more don't come and I can manage it, or risk my life. Perturbations overwhelm the spirit when confronted with a foe whom we must face with only one hand. We call to mind the fact that we are cultivating the will of the mind. We strengthen our resolve against this intrepid adversary or avoid them entirely. But first we'll need kitchenware with which to confront them. When you mold your mind to process the resources in the world around you as weapons and tools in a grueling fight against the undead, albeit with a major handicap in place like mouse only, everything in a mere kitchen can be conceived as a weapon of war. A sweater, okay. Baseball bat, that will be useful. And a school bag. Now we can fight. Wielding a mouse, we must confront the zombies in such a fashion that we position ourselves advantageously. Now is not the time to tarry and falter, fall all over ourselves, but rather dispatch a strategy that brings the adversary to our own home turf. One, two, one, two, and through and through. The baseball bat goes snicker snack. All right, combat is not a good idea, but I did get a wristwatch in this majestic hat. There's another one. We'll take this one at a time. I am not a violent man. I prefer the moniker man of violence. These two are distinct, you see. Stop. We need to think. Thinking is good every now and then. If you don't think, you might get hit by a bus or something. Yes, I insist that being able to pause at any given moment is a more honest way of playing Project Zomboid. After all, how else could we have an existential crisis every five minutes? Experiencing agoraphobia at the enormity of the world around you? Simply pause and think about it. It's easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle, the speed of everyday life. You might lose your head, but there's truly more value to be had in slow, methodical thought over a long period of time. Behind this window, we encounter another zombie. Usually the cause for alarm, but instead we'll just open the window, not panic, and do that. No more problem out the window. And we get free stuff. You see, walking is a matter of infinite hope. If we... Damn it. If we slow down our movements and actions, the cadence and rhythm of the world around us will match our tempo. Every move we make must be calm and calculant. No really though, I see people do this in multiplayer servers all the time. They go off running and they get themselves killed. Sad, like watching deer run into a hunter. If you simply practice your walking technique, you'll probably live a lot longer. If you remain calm, you can avoid another existential crisis. Ah. 
See where a little mindfulness gets us? We're slower to be sure, but the greatest chess player can seal victory with the fewest moves. By taking only the fewest, most important actions with mouse only, we've cut down on necessary movement and struggle that would otherwise be wasted as heat. Look, it's only the early evening and we've already taken out seven zombies, soon to be ten. One, two, ten. That's good. Dear God, I'm hungry. I could eat my whole left hand right now. Instead, I'll sit and watch TV. Learning is something I can do, although I have only one hand. Thank you, television. I have learned. Television will save you from the zombie menace. Pro no, it won't. It's time to get back to some reading. Although I am slow, I grow more powerful every day. I can pause, I can speed up, and I can have an existential crisis while I'm reading. Wait a minute, that reminds me. Television actually will save you. Thanks to my good friend Nurse, who made a bunch of videos on these exploits in Project Zomboid, which will hopefully never be patched out. This is something we can all enjoy even with only a mouse. That's right. No internet required. Now we just take all of these value tech televisions which look nothing like they were in The Sims and we're going to create a moat around our house with televisions. There is one of, uh... Well, I think you can see where this is going. Let's just speed up time. There is one, two. This will require a lot more. All right, job well done. One day through. All right, it's time to go to bed. It's 10.50 p.m., very late. I think about the way life is and the way things are going. Tomorrow, I'll steal more TVs. The second day. We wake up at 4.20 a.m. A new day brings a renewed sense of purpose. A rebirth of our very mission here. More and more zombies are coming every day. I won't be able to keep them back with this mouse forever. So we'll embark upon long-term planning. Observe, when confronted with television, they're simply stuck. But when we use television for good instead of evil, great things can happen. After only one montage, we awake, having illegally appropriated every TV from the nearby homes. Soon we can relax and sit on the grass. TVs are genuinely the greatest walls in Project Zomboid. Completely indestructible machines, a veritable force field from the ranks of undead that will inevitably swarm upon our walls if we pass the time here a while. How many more do we need to collect? Well, enough until the entire house is surrounded, of course. Our kill count said 22 and rising. But now, pause. A moment of reflection on our struggle as a whole. What is at stake here? Why am I surrounding my house with televisions? Actions aren't important in life unless if you can answer the why question about them after all. Consider these televisions. They're a metaphor, an analogy for what we're all struggling to achieve in life. What is it? Most of the time, it's probably making more money. Once you get enough money, or in this case, TVs, to surround your own house, You'd think you're good, right? As it turns out, that's only the beginning of this existential crisis. We spend most of our lives trying to get the TVs so that we can sit inside, but we never think about what the importance is of sitting inside in the first place. Wasn't all of the meaning to be ringed out in this struggle in that of obtaining the TVs in the first place? Therefore, we play the game and we decide if we live our life only in pursuit of the end of sitting inside of the house with the TVs, the struggle isn't worth it and the journey is not worthwhile. Therefore, I take joy in obtaining more TVs. Only a few more now. One. Crap. We have to get out of here fast. One, two, three, five, thirty. Never before in life have I ever felt so completely safe. A TV, a TV. My kingdom for a TV. Is there any deliverance from any of this? Is our experience, though televised, authentic? Yes. So much rests on the assertion of authenticity of our own experiences. For if we don't, the validity of our entire experience, our whole livelihood is at stake. So we rise at 4.20 a.m. again. I open the door. And now, with the TVs having been placed, we test whether our superpower is one that is authentic. Yes, but there's still one more piece, and this will require a long walk in the rain. Where to next? Of course, of course, the police station. Where else would we obtain righteous firepower? We obtain, of all things, a shotgun. But this is no ordinary shotgun. You see, the shotgun is a metaphor. A metaphor for what, you might ask? Is it capital T truth? Is it God? The very performative act of interpreting the shotgun is the truth and validity of our own experience. So long as it rests there on my back, you can be sure that the experience was worthwhile. Its wielding symbolizes actualization. This is truth. This is our truth. It is a pragmatic truth 
in that it validates and makes our experience worthwhile. And it makes our journey back to the TV castle pregnant with meaning. Was it all in vain? Was it all a worthless experience just to be cast aside and forgotten? Or will it remain with us? Every day, the choice is in your hands. This commenced as a challenge to play Zomboid with only one hand, but it metamorphosed into so much more for me. Will you accept the challenge every day to engage authentically with the world around you? Or will you capitulate and be sold abstractions and blithely sign away contracts forfeiting the legitimacy, the validity of your own personal experience? That, I assert, is the challenge we all must accept each day. Carpe diem, seize the day, and fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds of distance running. Or is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? I am ambiguous amphibian. A major thanks to my patrons, who are each themselves taking part in distance run right now. Until we meet again.